exact equations. A differential expression m of x and y dx plus n of x and y dy is called exact differential in region R, which is part of the xy plane, if it corresponds to a differential of some functions like f of x and y. Now, a first order differential equation of the form m of x and y dx plus n of x and y dy equal to zero is said to be exact equation if the expression on the left hand side is an exact differential. We have a nice criteria. If the partial derivative of m with respect to y is equal to partial derivative of n with respect to x, then you have an exact differential. Then you can go ahead and find that function f of x and y that satisfies this differential equation. Basically, we're using calculus. Let's take a look at one example. Consider 2y minus 1 over x plus 3 sine x dy dx, the rate of change of y with respect to x, plus y over x squared minus 4x cubed plus 3y sine 3x equal to 0. Is this exact? Well, we're going to multiply everything by dx to simplify this. You end up with 2y minus 1 over x plus cosine 3x dy plus, let's put this quantity in parentheses and multiply by dx. So you have y over x squared minus 4x cubed plus 3y sine 3x dx and the right hand side 0 times dx becomes 0. Now we are identifying m and n. m is equal to y over x squared minus 4x cubed plus 3y sine 3x. Take a look at your dx. So m is the quantity next to dx. And since dx is just right here, your m of x and y is this quantity. Now, if you take the partial derivative of m with respect to y, it becomes 1 over x squared. The derivative of negative 4x cubed is 0. Plus, the derivative of 3y sine 3x with respect to y is 3 sine 3x. Remember that x acts like a constant. Now, if you take the partial derivative of n with respect to x, since n is equal to 2y minus 1 over x plus cosine 3x, you can remember that. Here, you have n of x and y next to dy. So since your dy is here, your n is this quantity. Well, the partial derivative of n with respect to x is equal to 1 over x squared. Again, remember that the derivative of y with respect to x is 0, and the derivative of negative 1 over x is 1 over x squared. And here you can apply the chain rule. The derivative of cosine 3x with respect to x is negative 3 sine 3x. Now compare m and y and nx. The very first terms are equal to each other, but the second terms are not. So you have a positive 3 sine 3x and you have a negative 3 sine 3x. So the equation is not exact. Now let us take a look at one example of an exact differential equation. Here you have your 2y sine x cosine x minus y plus 2y squared e to power x y squared dx equals to x minus sine squared x minus 4xy e to xy squared dy. m is the quantity multiplied by dx, so it is 2y sine x cosine x minus y plus 2y squared e to power xy squared. And if we bring the y terms, the x and y terms next to dy to the other side, n becomes negative x plus sine squared x plus 4xy e to power xy squared. 
Now let us check to see if this criteria is met or not. Partial derivative of m with respect to y is 2 sine x cosine x minus the partial derivative of negative y with respect to y is negative 1. And for this quantity 2y squared e to x y squared, we have to apply the product rule. This becomes 4xy cubed e to xy squared plus 4y e to power x y squared. So here you have two quantities in terms of y. You have to apply the product rule f prime g plus f g prime. But it happens that it's exactly equal to partial derivative of n with respect to x. The partial derivative of negative x with respect to x is negative 1. The partial derivative of sine squared x with respect to x is 2 sine x cosine x. And for this quantity, if you apply the product rule with respect to x, you get 4y e to power xy squared plus 4xy y squared e to power x y squared. So as you can see, these two quantities are the same. It means that you have an exact differential equation. The criteria is met. What's the next step? In the next step, we're going to set partial derivative of f with respect to x equals to m, which is 2y sine x cosine x minus y plus 2y squared e to power x y squared. So set the partial derivative of f equals to m. Now you're going to take the integral with respect to dx. The integral of f of x with respect to x is equal to f, which is equal to y sine squared x minus xy plus 2 e to power xy squared plus a constant of integration, which is not just c. It's a function of y. So term by term, we took the integral of left-hand side and the integral of right-hand side with respect to x, everybody. So as you can see, the integral of 2y sine x cosine x is y sine squared x. The integral of negative y with respect to x is negative xy. And the integral of 2y squared e to power x y squared becomes 2x 2 e to power x y squared. Why? Because you can use chain rule and substitution. Here u is equal to x y squared. du is equal to y squared dx. So that's how you end up with the integral of 2 e to power u, which is 2 e to power u plus the constant of integration which is h of y at the same time h prime of y is equal to zero so h of y is just a constant like what like c so we found all the missing information we can write the function as y sine squared x minus xy plus 2 e to power xy squared equal to c. That's how we find a solution for an exact differential equation.